Status and Variance in Machine Learning. Welcome to Simply Learn. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified. Get ahead. What is in it for you? Importance of error calculation, errors in machine learning, bias and its effects, variance and its effects, bias variance trade off, total error. Really, we're starting to dig in deep into our different machine learning models so we can understand which ones work better and why. And very central to that is the bias and the variance and how these affects and the trade-offs of them. Importance of error calculation. Importance of error calculation. An error can be described as an action which is inaccurate or wrong. And you see here the... Uh, Everybody's favorite or least favorite error, 404 error, trying to find a website. Sorry, the page cannot be found. Uh, so this is really what we're looking at is, is where do we find things that are wrong? Because we don't really want our errors to rule our models. And in machine learning, error is used to see how accurately our model can predict on data it uses to learn, as well as new unseen data. Uh, and you can see here we have a nice little chart, model predictions, actual values, and the error. Uh, so the error being the difference between the two. This little chart, it's usually a plus or minus kind of thing. We talk about errors if we're doing regression models. Um, or it could be, in this case, how many um, uh, mispredicted values if you're doing categorizing. Based on our error, we choose the machine learning model which performs best for a particular data set. And so let's go ahead and dig a little deeper into errors in machine learning. Uh, there are two main types of errors. Uh, present in and machine learning model. They are reducible errors and irreducible errors. Irreducible errors are errors which will always be present in a machine learning model due to unknown variables and whose values cannot be reduced. You can think of this if you're trying to guess wind direction and how heavy the wind's going to blow it's really hard to do. It's really hard to see something. There's something even as humans we can't predict because of the chaos and um, so you have that part of the error, that irreducible error that you're never going to be able to be a hundred percent perfect on your predictions. Reducible errors are those errors whose values can be further reduced to improve a model. They are caused because our model's output function does not match the desired output function and can be optimized. And so you can think of uh, reducible error as something we can try to address and fix. Irreducible means that there's just it's, it's just beyond the capacity of the computer to do. Uh, it's beyond the capacity of anybody to do because there's always some form of chaos involved in any system. So you're never going to be 100% no errors. Reducible errors can be further divided into two main constituent errors. We have bias and we have variance. So now we're talking about very specific types of errors. Uh, we're looking at the bias and the variance. And let's start with bias and its effects. Bias is the difference between our actual and predicted values. Bias are the simple assumptions that our model makes about our data to be able to predict on new data. Below example shows our model making wrong assumptions and mistaking a cat for a fox. Uh, so you can see here we have an actual versus a predicted. Uh, it might be that the bias represented by pointy ears because it only looks at the point of ears, it doesn't notice the rest of the face, and so it's going to predict that the um, animal is a fox, because foxes have pointy ears, when it's actually a cat. That's the kind of thing we look at a bias, because you could still go in there, and even as humans, we can easily say, okay, that is actually a cat. Uh, so our model should be able to do that also. There's clear differences there. When the bias is high, assumptions made by our model are too basic. The model can't capture the important features of our data. One of the early uh, facial recognition softwares that were out there based the uh, recognition pattern on the person's profile only and not their facial features. And so we had a huge bias as far as certain people and because their profile matched and it didn't go any deeper than that. That's the kind of thing. And you can see, of course, the cat and the uh, fox, they both have pointed ears. Probably not, you know, that's kind of generates a bias for pointed ears to foxes or something. And so we look at our model and our data, we start realizing that we need to get a little deeper and look a little bit more uh, on finite details, or the model needs to program itself and look a little closer at what it's looking at. 
The model can't predict on the data provided to it, let alone on new data. This is called underfitting. So there's our key word for this particular kind of bias uh, is an underfitting effect is it's not able to predict something because it doesn't look at all the different features. Variance in its effects. Variance can be defined as a model's sensitivity to fluctuations in the data. Our model may learn from noise. This will cause our model to consider trivial features as important. And so we can start looking at, uh, here's our actual and our predicted value. You can see where the cat becomes a cat, the fox becomes a cat. And it might be looking at the fact that the nose and the ears. It might be looking at very specific features and saying, well, that defines whether it's a cat or a fox. When the variance is high, our model will capture all the features of the data given to it. it will tune itself to the data and predict on it very well. And this is a very important thing to note. Um, it's kind of hard to visualize. So uh, the model will capture all the features of the data and it predicts very well. So our model comes out really good on the data that we programmed it with. It knows it, uh, it, it it's almost like 100%. When you put new data in, it doesn't do as well. And that's when you know you've overfitted is the data you did not train it with doesn't show up correctly. New data may not have the exact same features and the model won't be able to predict on it very well. This is called overfitting. So remember underfitting kind of looks at just like a generic profile of it and it's not trained well enough. Overfitting is the opposite. It's so trained to the data that it's looking for very exact outputs based on the data coming in. And in fact there's now a number of models out there that when they uh, do the fitting they stop when they, they'll look at um, the data that's not being used as a training model and they'll just automatically stop when the two kind of match when you have uh, the amount of error is about the same between them. So we have a bias variance trade-off. When we talk about bias variance trade-off, to optimize the error in our model, we need to find the right balance between bias and variance. This is called bias variance trade-off. Regression is a model which finds a relationship between output and input variables by deciding which of the inputs are important and giving more weightage to them. Let's use regression for the data given in the graph. The regression output is a straight line. A lot of the features of our data will be missed. The model will be underfitted. In this case, bias is high and variance is low. And you can think of it this way is that you have a high error on everything. Uh, so your, your error on both the data you're fitting it with and on your output is still high. If the regression output is a curve which fits the data perfectly, then our model is learning from the noise too. The model will be overfitted. In this case, bias is low and variance is high. And if you think of our cat and fox example, the noise might be the fact they both have fur. And it might look at all the fox pictures had a little more fur and all the cat pictures had a little less fur. That would be an overfitting, kind of a visual example of an overfitting on there. And you can see here we have the overfit, the lowest versus the bias, and it goes directly through all the points. There's no averaging out. There's no kind of uh, generalization involved. The perfect fit for our data is a curve as shown. It fits to our data and disregards the noise. In this case, bias is low and variance is low. Low bias and variance condition will give us a balanced model. And you can see here uh, uh, balance variance trade-off, low bias versus low variance. Again, really one of the things we're looking at is that we train the model as good as we can so that its prediction on unknown data and the prediction on its trained data kind of match with the same amount of error. That's kind of like we've hit the max. Anything else after that, we're just programming noise in there. Total error. The total error is defined as the total sum of the difference between the predicted values and actual values in the data set. This can be represented in terms of reducible and irreducible error, as error equals the sum of all actual values minus predicted values. Error equals the irreducible error plus reducible error. So keep in mind when we start looking at error, it's usually where you start and you have your uh, working with your shareholders. Really that bottom error that you show them is both of them. And so when you're presenting this to shareholders, really drawing the bottom line and saying, hey, we can't predict below this part, and this is the reducible part as we're coming down. This is what we're looking to uh, find. And it's really important because as your models change and as you find better and better models to fit your data, really being able to see where these two 
separate helps a lot in finding a better model and a better prediction. Error equals sum of all actual values. Predicted values, error equals the variance plus the bias squared. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So let's go ahead and take a look at a hands-on for this. And in this demo, we'll generate a random data set and use graphs and matplot library to plot the bias and variance with the data. And we'll be using Python. Um, I always go through Anaconda and Jupyter for doing demos because it does a nice inline uh, display. You can probably follow this with just about any Python IDE. Um, we're using, I think, uh, I'll either be in 3.6 or 3.8, depending on what uh, which setup I go under for the Python version. So here we open up our uh, Jupyter or our Anaconda, and then I'll go under the Jupyter Notebook and go ahead and launch that. Once I've opened up my uh, Python interface, which in this case is in Google Chrome, we'll go ahead and create a new Python 3. And once we're in the Python 3, let's go ahead and get our model going here. In this demo, we're actually going to do two different um, little short demos here. And this is just, this is a, like a lot of fun. Um, so one of the cool things we can do, oops, it helps if I... Uh, jumped ahead there as far as what we're working on. So this is one of those really fun things we can do. Uh, as you know, there's the NumPy module for your number array. And we're going to take that NumPy module's NP, and we're going to use our matplot library, nice inline in the Jupyter Notebook. If you're running this in a PyCharm, you'll find that it has a pop-up window. And we're going to go ahead and create our data set. Uh, and so we'll have um, our line space, 1 to 12, and then you can see we put in a nice array, and we'll go ahead and plot this data so you can actually see what we're talking about. Let me just go ahead and run this. And so here we have our uh, x value, if you will, which is your, uh, in this case, it's you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, so on. And then we have kind of a splattering of data going across. Now, we went ahead and picked our data points. They did a bunch of random plots until they kind of had the data that looks like this. And we wanted to do that so that as we do the, the rest of this little short demo, before we get into one that actually uses some weather data, you have a little visual of what's going on here. And we have a little bit more control over the course. So you could do this with random data if you wanted, and you'll see some interesting results. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to do use the polyfit. It's just going to fit this data to a polynomial uh, function, and it's going to be a degree one. So this is basically a Euclidean line. That's all we're doing is drawing a line based on this data. And so we're going to go ahead and plot that data and take a look at it. And you can see if we draw a line through the data, uh, it really doesn't capture the data very well. Uh, as you put in the x number, your predicted value on the y-axis is going to really not connect very well. A lot of variance here. Uh, so we're looking at the setup on this where the variance is just high. This is kind of a bad model to really view this data with. And we can take a look at it and look at it the other direction. Uh, if you remember, we had overfitting. So in this case, we're going to use a variance, we're going to actually use a degree 10 polynomial to fit this. And if we plot our uh, level 10 polynomial on here, look how closely it fits the data. Now, if I was looking at this data just visually, you're going to guess that some of this is variances right here the, the, as far as the uh, setup coming in. Uh, let me just put a little drawing line there. Grab an arrow. There we go. Uh, so we look right here. Look how this just jumps, and then from here to here you have a line and a jump and another line. It really jumps around. I wouldn't, I would just looking at it, I, it's almost painful to look at it and think of this as a predicted, uh, uh, predictive values uh, as far as generalize, you know, getting enough generalization to capture new data coming in. And so we're going to go one more. Uh, like I said, this is just a brief look at what we're talking about, and we're going to have it do a polynomial degree 2. Well, what's a polynomial of degree 2? It's hyperbole. Um, and it's either going to be aimed up 
or aim down. You look at this, uh, you'd be looking at a minus a times x squared plus b or something like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that with our hyperbole. And look how nicely it fits the data here. Uh, it's got a little variance, but if I was going to pick from these three different formulas, I'd definitely go with the third one here because it goes right through a lot of the data. And as a generalization, it looks like a pretty good rule for predicting what's going to happen depending on your x value. And if you put another value in here, you get a pretty good guess um, if it continued with the same format. So this is looking at it where we controlled the data and you can see the polynomial fit from an NP uh, numpy array, the NP array. Uh, let's take a look at this and actually put it to some um, data on here. And we're going to use the weather station as far as like a, a format. It's always fun to bring in some new data on this. And let's take a look at that. Let me go ahead and create a new, let's see, here we go, new Python 3. Go ahead and close out this one we just did. I don't need to save that. Uh, and let's go ahead and go in here and take a look at something different. So for this one, uh, we'll go ahead and use our pandas just because it makes it reading files really easy and quick. We're going to be looking at our SK model selection import train and split. Uh, a lot of this, if you're at this level already talking about bias and variance, should all look familiar when we're working with SK Learn. We're going to do our pre, some pre-processing stuff on the data. Um, here, let me put an arrow up here for our pandas. And then, of course, here's our uh, NumPy setup here. You almost always see pandas and NumPy together since pandas sits on NumPy. And we use NumPy for a lot of things. Um, in this case, we'll actually be using the SK Learn linear regression model. By the way, the linear regression model for most data going in, if it's just raw numbers, and they're, depending on what, if there's not like a, a split in features of true, false, and things like that, the linear regression model is one of those. It's just so powerful. Um, and then uh, date time, I think some of the data has a date time stamp on it. Um, sometimes we just import it because it's a habit. <laughs> When I'm doing really large data pools, uh, I put a timer at the beginning at the end because I might be doing um, the first 100 out of 3,000. And if that takes an hour to go through all that data, because each one of those is a huge file, then I can guess that, um, or you know, if it takes like a minute, well, that's 300 minutes. Uh, so that's a couple hours. And if I'm going to run it on 3,000, I want to start looking at multiprocessors and things like that. So again, these are things that we just kind of bring into our setup. And we'll go ahead and run that so they're all nice and neatly loaded. And then we did just straight data. If you put your variable down here in a Jupyter Notebook, um, it does a nice job of printing it. You can also wrap it in a print statement. It's always the last piece of data you put on there that it prints. If you put a bunch on that, it'll only print the last one. So this is the data we're looking at. This is the weather history um, comma separated variable file. Of course, you can always put a note in our um, YouTube or send a note back to the team if you don't have a copy of this file and you want them to send you a copy and more information. And you can see here we have our uh, formatted date, our summary, precip type, temperature, apparent temperature, humidity, all these different variables that they're picking up off of their different weather instruments. Uh, and I happen to live near um, NCAR, National Center for Atmospheric Research. They collect so much data, it's mind-boggling. They don't even know what most of the data they collect means. Um, in fact, there's, there's so much data that is untouched, and they're still digging through all the features to figure out how um, these different measurements work. So as we start going into that, we're going to spend a little time. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this next part explaining it. Um, just to give you a feel of some of the stuff that goes on, I was originally going to take this out and just put it all in one set of line statements. Uh, but as a data scientist, 80% of your work is cleaning up the data. And so here we have our date. We're going to switch that to formatted because, you know, you, you kind of want your date to switch around a little bit. Formatted date, month, date, 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 month. So we're just meshing with the uh, date information there and then double checking it on our printout. And the next step we might want to go through is take a look at um, some of the stuff we might want to drop. Because we just, oh, here we go. You can see here, here's the date and month at the end. Uh, so we really don't need the formatted date anymore. That's just a character string. So we're going to go ahead and drop that. 
We're going to drop the daily summary, the pressure in millibars, loud cover, and uh, let's drop the date too. So we're just going to have the month on the end. Uh, and we'll print that out again and run it. Again, these things are as you're, is more of a um, domain specific, very specific to weather and what you're looking at. You could probably do a cross validation or feature selection kind of setup in here to figure out what you're looking at. We're not going to spend time on that because we're really focused on, uh, in this case, the bias and the variance on here. Uh, so, okay, we've cleaned up a little bit of our data as we look down at it. One of the things we probably want to go ahead and do is uh, um, do an encoder. So anything that has like a label, in this case we have what, rain, uh, precipitation type, that'd be something that'll be running through an encoder. Let's go ahead and do that on here. Pre-processing encoder, and so the summary, label, fit, transform, summary. Let's see, where is our, yeah, summary, partially cloudy, mostly cloudy. We want to go ahead and do an encoder for that. Make sure it's unique on there. And run that, and then print the data out again. And you can see now summary is 19, 17, 17. So it's given it a nice uh, integer value for uh, as far as the summary set up on there. And then there's also precipitation type. That's the one I noticed first. <laughs> they went for the summary first, our guys in the back. Um, so we have rain and snow. We want to look at that and, and uh, go ahead and take that and switch it around. Precipitation type, replace rain and snow with 0, 1. We'll go ahead and run that. And there we go. Precipitation type 0. We have our summary. That's all nice and integers. Looking across. Double check everything. And uh, if you'll notice on here, one of the things, let's see, data. Uh, we want to go ahead and check for null values. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Data is in A. This is our, uh, remember our data is a pandas. This is a pandas checking for uh, null values, and we're going to summarize it. And it does it by each column. And look at this, precipitation type has 517 null values. That's going to cause an issue. So we want to go ahead and fix that. And again, I'm not spending a lot of time on this, because uh, this pre-processing data is really digging in here to this specific data. Uh, and so we want to focus a little bit more on the end result. And then we're going to go ahead and take our uh, precipitation and replace it with a zero. So any place there's a null value, we want to put a zero in there. We'll go ahead and run that. Uh, and now we have our sum. There's no null values. We went ahead and took care of that. I have a feeling that if I dug deep, this last step was probably incorrect. Um, only because I have a feeling that when we did the 0, 1 underneath precipitation type that there might have been a third value and that that's what, that's what gave us the null values. I could be wrong. Um, again, I'd have to dig through hundreds of lines of data. Um, for this demo, probably not. But if you're on your own time, you might spend a little time trying to figure out what we did right here and why it's probably wrong. Uh, but for this, this is going to work just fine for what we're looking at. And now we dive into the fun part. Um, and I, I, formatting data to me is also fun. Digging through the data and finding out where the null values is and what it means. That's a different kind of fun. It's very domain specific. Uh, so I usually find myself learning something new when I look through, really intensely look at the data. This is the part where we're starting to talk about the data science. Uh, so here we have why we're going to look at apparent temperature C. That's what is going to be our, um, this is the column we want to use for our Y. There's our Y value. And then we're going to go ahead and take that same column and drop it from our data. So we have our Y value and our data. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. You could say our data is going to be our X data. So we have our Y data and our X data. Uh, so we go ahead and drop that, and you can see right here when we print the data, we no longer have the apparent temperature C. It's gone out of here. That's now our, going to be our Y value that we're trying to predict. And if we just type in Y and run that, these are the values that 
that we want to try to figure out. We, we're going to we want to guess what the uh, apparent temperature is going to be based on the other information. That's what we're looking for. And of course, you could switch this around. You could be looking to see if the temperature is going to be predicting the rain. There's all kinds of things you could do on here, depending on what, uh, how much fun you want to have and how deep you want to dig into this model. And here we're splitting our data. This should all look familiar now. We have X train, X text, Y train, Y test, uh, train test split. We have our data and our Y going in. Let me just put an uh, arrow right there. On this part is the one we're looking at. Um, and so we're going to do uh, what test size 0.2 so 20 percent we're going to use for test uh, random state equals zero not really too worried about that in this example and then we said we were going to use the linear regression model from SK learn because that's a really powerful model for dealing with numbers and we're dealing mostly with numbers and then we're just right off the bat going to fit our data to it so we're going to take our X train and our Y train and we're going to fit the model and let's go ahead and run that and you can see we've created a linear regression uh, fit intercept equals true and so forth that's just letting us know our model is is there and valid now from here we want to go ahead and run our prediction on our test data so remember it hasn't seen the test data here we did our training and we fit our data um, I you know I, I call it training but it's fitting the data is how SK learn refers it to it and then here we want to go ahead and get our prediction so we know what the answer is because we've already split the data but this model has never seen this X test data before and we want to go ahead and look at the numpy variance and we'll just push the prediction right into numpy variance to see how much variance there is in this data and let's go ahead and run that and you can see right here it generates kind of a, a number these numbers are hard to read because this variance is based on the data coming out. Uh, this is actually a pretty high variance. You'll see right here is our Y and it's coming out and saying 112. You look at a lot of these values are 26, 24. So this is a very high variance on here. So our predicted values coming out are pretty high. And we can go ahead and look at the um, bias on here. And if you remember from that last formula, we want to go ahead and find the squared value. This is the, uh, let's go back to that slide so it helps. And so you can see on this slide right here, we have the error equals the variance plus the bias squared. And that's where this formula is coming in from NumPy, is looking at that bias squared. We can go ahead and switch back there. There we go. Uh, so when we're in here, you can see right here is our bias equals our SSE, which is our error. And we want to go ahead and take the bias. We want to go ahead and take the variance. Uh, well, you can see here SSE equals the mean, mean minus Y times 2. And the bias is the SSE minus the variance. And we'll go ahead and run here and print the bias out. And you'll see we have a bias of 1.86. And so when we start looking at these numbers, uh, we start looking at this here as a very large number. Um, and we come down here and we see that our bias is pretty small. And we can see we're also looking at these numbers here is our Y value coming in. And so in comparison, when you put these three together, our variance is still pretty high. There's a lot of randomness in weather. Remember I was talking about you don't know which way the wind's blowing. Um, you know, you can stand there and say it's a windy day, but to actually guess how, you know, when the gust of wind is going to hit next and how it oscillates from moment to moment is almost impossible. It's really hard to do. Um, if you ever want to try it, go out there and stand in a windy day. And you can see here that we're looking at temperatures and things like that and weather. It's the same thing. There is a lot of variance in this. So we're, this is why a meteorologist can be within 50% of predicting the correct uh, temperature coming up and they still get to keep their job. That's the job I want, you know, 50% accuracy and you still get to work there. Imagine that. Um, definitely wouldn't get that in most jobs. That's what this means right here. There's a high variance in weather. There's just a lot of random factors coming in. Uh, but you can see down here when we sort it out, we look at the error and we look at the bias, the bias is really small. In other words, this model fits pretty good with given the variance it has. 
Uh, so you can see how we're weighing the variance and the bias on there, and we get the bias down while the variance is not going to be changeable on that. Again, you know, if you want any of this, um, a copy of the stuff in, like that, send a note over to Simply Learn, and they'll be happy to forward some of the, either the first demo or the second one with the CSV for the weather uh, data. So we've now gone through a couple demos on bias variance demo, uh, or two, <laughs> two different demos on bias variance. Uh, the first one, we made up our own data just so we'd have something that we knew was going to turn out. And then we went ahead and looked at uh, some weather models and put that through a linear regression model so you could see what that looks like. Again, thank you for joining us today with Simply Learn. For more information, please visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.